Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Tiny Blue Games. My name is, of course, Seesaw or Chris, and today we're talking about Guild Wars 2 in 2024. Now, it's been a little while since I've made a standalone Guild Wars 2 video, but one of the things I've wanted to talk about over the last few weeks that I just haven't gotten to is the rumors surrounding a Guild Wars 3 coming to us. Um, and I know if, if you're someone who's quite tuned into the community, you've probably already had a bunch of your favorite content creators talk about this. Um, but as someone who's kind of on the, the outskirts of the Guild Wars 2 community um, and just plays very casually, I've wanted to kind of give my thoughts on it. Um, my thoughts, I guess, more generally on games and MMOs that make a, a sequel as opposed to just introducing a new expansion, um, but also about if it's time for Guild Wars 2 to have a Guild Wars 3 and what, what that might do for the game. Uh, so that's really gonna be the discussion points of this video. In the background, I'll be doing some fun Guild Wars 2 stuff. Uh, hopefully you stick around, hopefully you enjoy it. Uh, but let's jump in. Just before we do though, I should mention I am a Guild Wars 2 or ArenaNet partner. Does that mean I won't say anything bad about Guild Wars 2? No, I'll say the good, I'll say the bad, I'll say the middle, I guess. Um, what it does mean though is that you will find two sponsored or referral links in the description below. One of them allows you to try out Guild Wars 2 for free and supports the channel while using it, um, and the other allows you to purchase any of the Guild Wars 2 expansions while also supporting the channel. Um, either way, always grateful if you check them out. Um, but with that, let's get to the video. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about is whether or not having a sequel to a game is a good thing in general. Now, the nice thing about Guild Wars 2 is that they've already gone through this. You know, there's been a Guild Wars 1, there's a Guild Wars 2. It makes a lot of sense that there should be eventually a Guild Wars 3 if the series is still popular, um, and it seems to be. And I think that's, at, at the surface, one of the most exciting things about these rumors in general is that there's enough support for Guild Wars that there could be a Guild Wars 3. And I think I think that's great. I think they've seen success with the game, um, certainly over the long term. I, I don't even know how many years it's been now that since, what, it was 2012 that it released. So yeah, many, many years that it's been out in the market and people keep playing it and keep coming back to the new expansions. So obviously there is desire for a Guild Wars 3. Um, however, this is just the very tip of the iceberg. If, if they do end up going down that path, um, it'll be multiple years of development likely. So, you know, it's not something that's coming out anytime soon, um, but it is exciting in that regard. Um, but to my previous point, there is a precedent for this. There is a, a Guild Wars 1, there was a Guild Wars 2, they went through that transition. Um, I have less experience on that because I actually didn't play Guild Wars 1. I came in at Guild Wars 2, um, but I know a lot of the player base did go through that transition. Um, and it seems like, from what I've seen from a, an outsider, that it was handled mostly well. I know, you know, they, they've done a lot of things to um, kind of memorialize the progress that players made in that initial game um, for the, the new players. I know that you can obviously still play Guild Wars 1, and there is occasionally little bits of updates and stuff there, though it is more on maintenance mode, um, which is maybe what would happen to Guild Wars 2 eventually once Guild Wars 3 released, um, and that's obviously a question. Um, but I think more than anything, the excitement of Guild Wars 2 outweighed the loss of Guild Wars 1. And if that's something that they can achieve in this next stage of their game, then it's gonna be received positively. If they go and release it, and either it feels like it could have just been in an expansion, or it actually is less desirable than Guild Wars 2, they're gonna be met with way more negativity. And there's, there's a few examples of this. I think the more obvious one is the idea of what could be an expansion versus a sequel. Um, if it comes out and it feels and plays very similar and it's just, just a really big new content area and stuff like that that could have been expansion, that's going to feel pretty bad. I mean, we see this a lot with games that, um, you know, come and have an expansion that feels like it could have just been a patch, right? Like, it's going to be that same vibe, but even to a greater extent. Um, the more challenging one, probably for them to gauge, uh, as well as us to gauge, is if whatever revolutionary thing they're doing to the game isn't desired by the player base. And there's a, a prime example in my mind of this, um, and that's the release of MapleStory 2, um, that kind of a sequel to MapleStory 1. Um, obviously, MapleStory 1 has been in market for a long, long time. 
Um, people keep coming back to it. It kind of went through a, a boom phase and then had been slowly dying off. Um, and there was enough interest that there was, you know, to, to put together uh, Maple Story 2. Um, and it was very different. It was kind of a, a 3D, um, not fully 3D though, uh, like 2.5D, I guess is what they kind of call it, game with um, kind of similar gameplay loops and classes and fantasy and stuff like that, but very much a departure from the classic Maple Story game. Um, and a lot of people were excited to check it out. Uh, but over time, different systems in that game eventually ruined it. And there were some really great parts of it. I definitely remember the first few months of it having an absolute blast, but I don't think it scratched the itch that the original Maple Story started for people. Um, and because of that, it eventually started dying off. And at, at this point, it's closed and there's still a Maple Story 1 running, which for most developers, that's probably the scariest option because they've sunk so much cost into making that new game. And if in the end they just go back to their original game as their flagship game, that's that's not good. I mean, if Guild Wars 2 tried the release, had a really popular like first half a year, and then closed shop and went everyone went back to Guild Wars 1, that we probably would not be having a conversation at all about a Guild Wars 3. Um, so that's that's really where I see that. Um, in terms of if I prefer games that just continually expand themselves, like we, we look at World of Warcraft that obviously has been in market for a tremendous amount of time and hasn't had a, a WoW 2, though some would say it might need it, um, versus games that do this like Guild Wars 2, um, obviously Final Fantasy XIV kind of did this as well. Um, do I think there's a better approach between the two of them? Not really. I think there's certainly a level of hype that you can build by releasing a new game. Um, and if you actually capture new optimizations and systems to such a degree that it feels like a new game, there's going to be a lot of people who come check it out. I remember when Guild Wars 2 released, and I was looking at the videos as someone who'd never played or heard of really Guild Wars 1, I was like, wow, this is something to check out. And what, what stuck out to me, and it's, it's such a little part of the entire game, was when someone walked out of water and there was water drops all over their screen. And it, it's such a little thing, but I was like, holy cow, That we, we are in the next generation of games. That's so immersive. Um, and we've seen other games do that from now, like from that time. Um, but it was it was really eye-catching. And um, obviously they, they flipped a lot of MMO traditional stuff on their head. And that's kind of more to do with the identity of Guild Wars 2 versus you know the fact that it was a sequel. Um, but it definitely drew a lot of hype. It was a very sought after game at that point. Um, and I remember being very invested. Uh, so there is that benefit there. The, the negative to this though, is when you do have sequels, is that you you might alienate players who haven't played the first game. And th th for this example, I like to reference Final Fantasy XIV. Um, I was very hesitant to play Final Fantasy XIV because A, I didn't understand how Final Fantasy games worked at all. Uh, when just hearing Final Fantasy XIV, I, I figured this was the 14th game of a series of games, and I probably wasn't going to really understand it unless I played through 1 through 13 first. Which is not even close to the case, because these games are, you know, very different genres from each other. Um, I think only two of them, like 14, and I want to say 11, but I'm super sorry if I get it wrong, are MMOs. Um, and you don't even need to play the, the previous MMO to enjoy the, the you know, 14. Um, so it, it's not a big deal, but from the, someone who doesn't understand that, it can seem like it. And I, I did have that hesitation when playing Guild Wars 2 as well. I was like, do I need to play Guild Wars 1? I mean, and I'd say of the two of them, there's maybe more instances in Guild Wars 2 where I was like, dang, I kind of wish I'd played Guild Wars 1, um, especially as they went through some of these expansions that dealt so heavily with Guild Wars 1 lore um, that it really felt that way. So. Very interesting in that regard, um, and something to keep in mind. So that's that's kind of the scene that I want to set, just talking sequel versus extension. The real question though, and this is, I, I don't know who knows the answer to this, hopefully ArenaNet do, um, is whether or not Guild Wars 2 is ready for a sequel. Um, it's something that they've evaluated once before, so they do have experience with this. They obviously saw Guild Wars 1, it was doing quite well for itself, and they decided they had the technology and the direction to warrant a new version of the game, and it was launched successfully. 
So if they have all of those things again, they should be able to make that decision and make Guild Wars 3. Uh, what's particularly interesting though is I, I struggle to understand what major changes they would be able to implement that would warrant it. Uh, there's certainly, you know, game engines and graphical updates that would breathe a lot more fresh air into the game than there currently is. Um, the game has actually aged very gracefully with its art style being more painted than uh, realistic. And I would suspect if they were to do a new version, they might double down on um, kind of the newer systems and maybe go for a realistic approach. Um, again, who knows if they would change like even more core concepts of the game. I'm pretty sure Guild Wars 1 was like click to move and very different feeling. Uh, whereas Guild Wars 2 was, you know, obviously played like a, a very traditional 3D MMO. So there's a lot of questions that way. Um, it gets it gives them a lot of opportunity. If there's a system that they hate and they can't flat out remove, like maybe they just hate how um, there's no Holy Trinity, which I know that's not going to be what they say, but if it was me, that's what I'd say. Um, this gives them the opportunity to be like, you know what, we're going to have a tank, we're going to have healers, we're going to have DPS in this next version, um, and we're going to do that. So if there's some really big changes that have been kind of like on their list of things they wish they could do something about, but it's so entrenched they can't, this is a really good opportunity for that. And so maybe there is more of that angle versus a technology standpoint. Um, but there have been, you know, pretty good changes in the quality of games that we've seen in the last five years uh, versus when Guild Wars 2 came out. So there, there certainly are some jumps that could come that way. Um, the big question is, you know, when that does happen, or if it does happen, what happens to Guild Wars 2? Is whichever expansion that they're currently in, the last expansion that's received, and it kind of goes into maintenance mode with some updates, it's likely the case. I think, you know, looking at what happened to Guild Wars 1 and evaluating that is probably a really, you know, strong indicator. I think on their end, obviously, they'd see how many of their existing users transition from Guild Wars 2 to Guild Wars 3, and then they'd make that choice. If they saw that, you know, a lot of people stayed in Guild Wars 2 or were coming back to Guild Wars 2, they might make a similar choice to MapleStory and just eventually stop the newer version in favor of one that's worked so well. Um, but we'll have to see. At the end of the day, though, they have confirmed that there are still numerous expansions coming to Guild Wars 2. So either way, this is a, a long period of time before we actually have to make the jump and see what's there. But I think as someone who just loves MMOs in general, any kind of conversation about there being enough excitement for a, a, a studio to make a new version of the game is really exciting. And Hopefully you all feel the same way. But I'd love to see all of your thoughts about a potential Guild Wars 3 in the comment section below. And as always, thank you for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks.